Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm T.K. Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member Magazine. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the show. We're shooting here in the New York offices of the Conference Board, and uh, it's a very hot day in New York, but we've got a great topic um, here in the studio. Um, we're going to be talking about audit committee chairs, tips for effective audit committees. And joining me is somebody that knows just a wee bit about this topic, and that's Paula Loop, who's the leader of PwC's Governance Insight Center. Welcome back, Paula. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you back. So, and the reason we needed to have you back is we've spent a lot of time recently on committees. No surprise, everything gets done in committees. Not everything, but almost a lot. everything gets yep. done in committees. We've been talking about new committees. We've been talking about cyber. We've been talking about um, comp. Um, certainly NomGov, which is on the rise. But I sort of feel like we've ignored the audit committee just a little bit yeah. because of all this other stuff. That's probably a good sign because that means that if you remember back in the Sarbanes-Oxley days, all we did was talk about the That's audit right. committee. So they've got their act together, okay? But it doesn't mean that we can ignore it or let it go. So. Um, I saw that PwC put out a publication and you did a blog on how effective audit committees and how chairs can be the difference. So that's certainly what I'd like to talk about. So let's talk about the audit chair and why they can make a difference and why it's important. Yeah, so the role of the audit committee chair, I think, is is really important. It's um, first of all, you know, you talked about the fact that you know a lot of other committees are up and coming, more going on, but the audit committee, remember, for most boards, there's the longest committee meetings, right? And sometimes they go over, so we need to talk about, about that, try to prevent that from happening. But um, long committee meetings, a lot of stuff on their charter that they have to get through. So lots of really important topics that have to be covered. Um, I think the other interesting things about um, the audit committee chair that are really important is they've got to have some really pretty deep relationships with a fair number of individuals at the company. So the audit committee chair is usually the, the um, primary relationship with the CFO, with the lead audit partner for the external auditors, with the head of internal audit, and even with um, the head of ethics and compliance. And those are, those are good insights that the board needs. So that you know audit committee chair really needs to develop those relationships. Obviously, the chair reports back up to the, uh, the broader board. And also, um, the audit committee chair helps work with the other committees on, on different matters. So for example, I know you talked about the comp committee, but the comp committee decides executive compensation, but usually using non-GAAP or adjusted non-GAAP numbers, numbers that aren't audited. So they really need to line up with the audit committee chair to find out what kinds of things the audit committee has thought about related to those numbers to make sure those are good. And then also the other hot topic is culture, company culture. The audit committee has a lot of insights about company culture. They usually get the insights from whistleblower lines, the activities around compliance and internal audit. So they've got some good data points, but so do other committees. And so linking those insights and see if there's any themes or, or um, trends there, I think is also really important that the audit committee has to do. And then last but not least, probably the most important thing about your audit committee chair, I think, is they have to have a really good risk radar. Um, there's a lot of things that come through that committee that can have a significant impact on how investors, shareholders view the company. So you think about maybe a financial reporting issue or an internal control issue. You've got to have somebody in that seat that can really do a good risk balance on what's important, what's not. Um, uh, very often if there's an investigation that has to happen, it'll be done at the audit committee. And the audit committee chair has to know 
when you've done enough, when to stop investigating, when to move on. So risk, uh, I think that whole risk monitoring has, is really important in that chair role. And when you think about it, in many companies, the cyber is still in uh, the audit committee. And okay. the agenda's expanded. You're right. absolutely right. More risk oversight, typically, for the audit committee. Yeah. So I've always considered the audit committee to be like the foundation of the board's committees, okay? Because just for all the reasons you talked about, if you've got a good audit committee to build on, I think that that sets the tone for the company, okay? So it makes it, and we believe this about every committee, but the chairs of these committees make a enormous they difference, do. okay? They do. they do work in between, they set the agendas, they really, so when you're a board, you're, you're having to make sure that you find the right person to do that. So Absolutely. audit chairs are important. So with all your research and all your experience, what tips do you offer the audit chair in your publication and again and everything that you've been producing what tips do you offer so an audit chair can improve the effectiveness of the audit committee yeah so the first place i'd start is i would say make sure you get a handle on the composition of your committee and you know take into consideration things like succession planning but even just a foundational who's going to be on the committee um, you know, on average, I think um, there's a, probably about four members to an audit committee. That's the average, most common number that we see, but it's anywhere between three and six members on the committee. Um, you have to have a financial expert or disclose that you don't and why. So most, almost all, obviously, have a financial expert, at least one. But thinking about the diversity of that composition, and when I say diversity, I think really about diversity of experiences. So. You know, you might want to have somebody with an audit background, somebody with, you know, street financial reporting, you know, CFO type background. But then given all those risks that you just talked about that a lot of audit committees are overseeing, you know, I think a CEO or someone with that broader perspective is also good to have in the room. So making sure that you have the right experiences um, of the committee members, I think, is really critical. So I'd start with composition. Um, the next big trick area, I guess, really most of the rest of them are all around planning and organizing. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff on the plate. Um, in the last couple of years, that plate has expanded for this more of the risk stuff. So making sure that you're really lined up with the charter, you know what your agenda is going to be throughout the year. You're developing relationships with these key management folks that are going to be important to the committee throughout the year. And that takes periodic meetings and doing things beyond just your board sessions. Um, another important thing to think about is uh, pre-calls before the audit committee meeting. So on average, probably about eight audit committee meetings a year, some telephonic, some in person, probably a blend. But having those pre-calls before the audit committee meeting with the key players from management and with the lead partner from the um, external audit firm are really important to make sure, one, you understand the materials. Two, you know, you understand how they're going to present them, what insights they're going to provide. Are there things you want to pull out from the presentation that you think are going to be really important for the committee? Where do you want to focus that? And again, it really helps to build that relationship and that trust between the two. So pre-read um, or pre-calls are important. Pre-read materials are really important. Um, as we all know, materials of now, you know, they're growing if you print them all out in a stack. Now they're mostly electronic, but the volume of materials is really growing. So how can you help the audit committee get through all those materials? So tips and tricks around highlighting changes from reporting quarter over quarter. Um, you know, maybe for people like uh, internal audit that's reporting or the head of compliance that's reporting, can you get to some sort of dashboard reporting that's easy for the committee to focus on things? So I think really going through the pre-read and trying to find better ways for the committee to get through it, digest what's there, but get to the meat of the issues, the things that you really want them to focus on um, before you get into the room. Then when you're in the meeting, right, and you've got to run this thing pretty efficiently, and I mentioned earlier that audit committee meetings are long and very often will go over. So you want to try to get them to, to run on time. And so that means really organizing the sessions, keeping the process moving through, preventing the presenters from just reading the pre-read material back to the committee, but instead focusing on themes, 
um, trends, highlights, really important things that you might not have gotten out of the dashboard, if you will, but they can bring in experiences from the past or whatever and, and provide themes to the committee. Um, and then the last thing around tips and tricks that I would say, or two more things, is use of executive sessions and private sessions. So private sessions, again, are those where you have a private um, conversation with one of the presenters. Executive sessions are just when the committee members need to have a conversation. Right. And that should happen a couple times a year over a variety of topics, but it should happen occasionally. Um, and the last area would be that um, proxy disclosure. You know, that's one thing that we really do encourage um, audit committee chairs to take a fresh look at every year, make sure you're getting out there with some good transparent information about all the great things the committee's doing so that the shareholders and investors know what's happening. Yeah, I think uh, uh, boards are getting that slowly but surely. Every year, there's significantly increased disclosure um, in many areas, you know, board evaluations, uh, committee operations, whatever. So it's still going to take a little bit for, you know, as more and more people get accustomed to, to reporting out and disclosing that stuff. But um, so I want to get back to the chair. Yes. Okay. Because again, we both know how important that is. So in, in your experience, what is the stumbling block to a board um, not getting the right chair? Okay, meaning is it a succession thing where they brought members on and they weren't thinking about who was going to replace them? Is it something where you got to make sure that somebody is current because it's changing all the time, digital transformation is affecting things? So what, from your experience, what do people not get right in the process to make sure that they get the right yep. audit chair? Yeah, and this comes up a lot. I mean, I get calls when people say, oh my gosh, our one financial expert on the board, something happened to him and now we have nobody. We're in a panic. We need to find someone. And you think, well, how could you possibly have gotten into that situation? But I think it is. It goes back to succession planning. It goes back to we still see boards that really only have one, um, one named, because again, we're only seeing what's disclosed, but one named um, audit committee financial expert. You know, most of the time, if you look at the bios, there's probably more than one in there, but they really are only disclosing the one. So thinking about making sure you're really comfortable every day with that you've got one and you've got a spare just in case you need it. So, um, so I would say the succession planning and the robustness of, or the depth of what you've got on the committee are things to make sure you have in place. Um, the other thing that we're actually seeing more and more of is, is transition thinking. You know, how do you transition when you know you have an audit committee chair that maybe is gonna move on um, or gonna retire or rotate off? Um, how are you transitioning the new person? And we're actually seeing more often than not, um, it's an audit committee member that goes into that role. And if so, they're part of the committee for a full year so they can see a full cycle before they actually take on the chair role. That's obviously the best way to do it. But um, have, recognizing in advance that you may have to do that succession and having some depth lined up is really important. Yeah. So I think we've done some shows in the past on transitioning that yep. chair position. So uh, that should be in our library. So how can people get a copy of, we got about 15 seconds left, so how can people get a copy of the um, audit effectiveness um, that you guys have produced? Please go to our website, the PwC Governance Insights Center website, and you can find all of our things categorized by committee, and go under Audit Committee, and you'll find all of our great Audit Committee Excellence series, and this is just one of the thought leadership pieces in that series. So there's a whole slew of stuff. Well, Paul Loop, thanks again for joining us. We had to get make sure we get that audit committee back in its rotation. Yeah. It's still got a lot on his plate, so that's it was for a good sure. plan. So I appreciate your time. And that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that'll help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardroom. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member. Along with content contributors, Equilar, 
Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosani, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.